The season for the 1987 Clemson football team would begin against Western Carolina. A lot of questions would need to be answered for the Tigers. Who could carry the ball? Who could replace two high pro draft picks? And could the defense be as good as it was expected to be? All these questions would be answered in short order on this Clemson football team in 1987. There'd be a lot of fine running backs. There'd be plenty of defenders. And the Tigers would record an impressive win to begin the 1987 football season by knocking off Western Carolina. Then it was on the road for one of the infrequent trips out of the Valley in 1987, and Wesley McFadden would make it count for the Tigers. On a terrible day, a muddy field in which the game would be plagued by rain and downpours throughout, Wesley McFadden would make his mark. He would rush for a game-high total of 197 yards, and he'd lead the Tigers to an impressive win over Virginia Tech. the Tigers walked off the field, they knew the next place they were walking into was the Valley against one of their traditional opponents, the University of Georgia. Checks in. They want someone sure-handed now just to make a catch. He fakes it. The Clemson defense oh gets down at the oh one-yard line. line. Did it go in the end zone? No. Oh. That was John Johnson, number 12, who chased that punt down, a 43-yarder. And the freshman makes a huge play. And the crowd very much comes into factor as a play now. He tips the ball back. It never crosses the plane, and there's two or three other orange jerseys there to put the stop on it. That's good coverage by special teams. Before the guts of this Clemson defense, of course, is their defensive line. The question is fourth quarter. They're big men. It's been humid down here in the field and hot, but they've been substituting, so I'd expect Clemson defensive line would be fresh and ready to stuff Georgia right now. Now back to you, Brent. That defensive front, Tony Stevens, Michael Dean Perry, Raymond Chavis. and sprinting in the end zone, can't get out. This is going to be a safety. James Lott, number five, and Gene Beasley, 27 all over him. Boy, they took a gamble. They figured they were going to come with some safe type of play, and they went an all-out blitz. And look, look at all the penetration. Jackson had no chance whatsoever. And Lott, number five, did a great job of slowing him down to, so his, till his teammates got there. And now, a field goal can beat Georgia. That's the significance of that safety. So they have set up a third and long situation. They've made it very tough on this call. Now, the option. Allen steps away. Allen creates it. Allen for the corner. the offensive line how they come off the ball see Phillips number 61 he came he was the right guard the huge hole the key block by Phillips the right guard who pulled and trapped and created the big hole for Allen straight ahead that was Tracy Johnson up over the top now the clock running Treadwell from the sideline. Here it comes. A year ago, Treadwell defeated Georgia with a field goal. History can repeat itself here this afternoon. It'll be a 21-yard attempt. Treadwell is 3 of 4. The crowd will tell you this story.
next game after the Georgia Bulldog win was the game against Georgia Tech. And the Tigers would do something they hadn't done in a long, long time. Donnell Wolford reels this punt in, takes it on his own 20, gets great blocks from the Tigers' special team, and he is off to the races. Wolford would not stop until he got into the end zone. It would be the first Tiger punt return in a long, long time, and it had set up the opportunity for a rare double at Clemson. Late in the ballgame, Joe Henderson on the receiving end of this kickoff by the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket has a little trouble with the handle, but gets it picked up and then gets a full head of steam, and he is off to the races once again. Henderson won't stop until he goes 95 yards for a Clemson touchdown. It's the first time in a long, long time that the Tigers have returned a punt and a kickoff into the end zone for scores, and it helps them give them a win over Georgia Tech. Now the next week, the Tigers would handle Duke in the Valley, and then it would be time to take on Virginia, a team that eventually would finish second in the ACC. It would be a back and forth struggle until Wesley McFadden would make his mark in the first half. He'd get the Tigers into scoring range, and his running mate, freshman Terry Allen, behind great blocking in the offensive line would scoot into the end zone. It'd be back and forth all day as the Clemson defense and offensive units would be tested to the maximum. And all ACC quarterback Scott Seacules would have the last chance to put Virginia on top. But you see the pickoff. James Locke with the interception and it preserves a Tiger win over Virginia. However, the following week, everything ended for the Tigers. The winning streak that had looked so promising through the season came crashing to a halt in the first half against North Carolina State. But to Clemson's credit, they came roaring back in the second half, playing perhaps the most exciting half of football during the regular season. Rodney Williams would lead the Tigers back into this contest, get them in a position to have a chance to win it. After trailing by almost 30 points, Tracy Johnson, Terry Allen, Rodney Williams, and the entire Clemson offense and defense would get Clemson back into the football game. Ricardo Hooper's touchdown had cut the lead down to almost nothing, but it'd still be enough for North Carolina State to hang on and take a win. The one special note in the ball game is that Michael Dean Perry, with this sack late in the fourth quarter, would break his brother's all-time record in the ACC. The following week against Wake Forest, the Tigers would have to recapture that spirit that had led them to such a successful start on the 1987 football campaign. And Joe Henderson was the man to ignite that spark. The sophomore running back would show Clemson fans yet another weapon in the Clemson arsenal. The third tailback to have an outstanding day on the season. Henderson's late fourth quarter touchdowns helped provide the winning margin for Clemson over Wake Forest and get them back on track to continue on their quest toward an ACC championship. And that quest would go through Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels, a team always expected to challenge for the title, much like Clemson, stood in Clemson's way. In a televised game on ESPN, both teams would slug it out through much of the contest. It'd be a game marked by tremendous defensive efforts. Michael Dean Perry with a sack on Mark May. And Rodney Williams choosing the opportunistic moment to find Gary Cooper on a touchdown pass to give Clemson a lead shortly before halftime. In the second half, the Tar Heels would tie the ball game and it would come down to a last minute drive once again. As every Clemson fan has seen so many times this year, the option play with Terry Allen uh, gain a first down in a big crucial third and fourth down situation. And then with Tracy Johnson leading the way and carrying the ball many times himself, Terry Allen would move even closer. And then it had come down to Mr. Reliable, a fellow who's done it so many times for the Tigers, David Treadwell with a field goal to win it for Clemson again. The 13-10 win over North Carolina would give the Tigers a chance to wrap up an ACC championship at home. And before a big crowd and in orange britches, the Tigers would do it against the University of Maryland. And they'd do it through the air. Rodney Williams finding Gary Cooper on a long touchdown strike, and then Gary Cooper finding a lot of friends in the end zone. In the second half, the Tigers had put the ball game away. Wesley McFadden, 60 yards for the touchdown. He'd outraise all the Maryland defenders and be into the end zone, and Clemson would make this one a route. As the fans cheered for another ACC championship, Rodney Williams put his arm on display, finding Gary Cooper again. 
and the Tigers had won the 1987 ACC championship. And with the ACC championship firmly in hand, Clemson would travel to Columbia to take on South Carolina. It'd be a battle of top 10 teams featured on ESPN. And after some initial success, the Tigers would find the going tough against a fired up Carolina football team. South Carolina had pointed towards their date with Clemson all season, and they were ready for the Tigers. Clemson would lose to Carolina, but they'd have a chance to make up for it when they accepted a bid to play in the Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. It's not easy to find that perfect bowl mix. You want good preparation, but you want your kids to have a good time. In Daytona Beach, Clemson worked. Two-a-day drills greeted the Tigers after a few weeks off. Preparations continue here in Orlando as well as the Tigers get ready to take on Penn State. They're going to need all the help they can to take on one of the nationally known programs. However, this is a bowl game. This is Florida, after all. And if it wasn't for the game, this would be a great vacation. There was a visit to Disney World where Clemson got off to a rough start, losing to Penn State in the orange squeeze-off. Uh, the other day in, uh, in some kind of a uh, baseball shootout, so we're one and one, and maybe the, the, uh, the third game is the, is, is the playoff game. But competition wasn't the main goal today. Those things will come on New Year's Day when the two teams meet on the field. This is Disney World, and while these football players may be 19, 20, even 21 years old, they still act like kids in a place like this. There's times like that when you go to places like that, you can enjoy yourself and just relax, like getting away from practice, getting away from everything. Just go out and have fun, enjoy yourself. That's the main purpose of going to places like that. A lot, a lot of the guys were, I remember Tony Stevens and Angelo Fox, they were both scared to get on Space Mountain, but I finally had to persuade them to get on. <laughs> I think they ended up getting on. Headquarters for the Tigers in Orlando is the Stouffer Resort Hotel. It's a stunning facility on the inside, and the folks there took real good care of the Tigers, making sure they were well-nourished as always. But the sight of football players traipsing through the lobby was a little hard to get used to. Yes, uh, this is a great hotel, and uh, there's a lot of activities here in Florida, and especially Orlando. Uh, I think the team, and uh, I know I'm personally having a great time down here. And on Wednesday, it was a chance for both Clemson and Penn State to give a little something back to Orlando. Shrine Charities is the major beneficiary of the Citrus Bowl, and the team spent the afternoon with children from the Shriners Hospital having a barbecue lunch and talking about the big game. I think it's great, you know, the guys from Penn State and us to come out and spend time with the Shriners. Um, you know, these kids are all, all as fortunate as we are to be able to perform in a game. And, you know, I think the guys out here are really enjoying themselves, you know, and, and showing the kids how much they appreciate them, you know. Players, of course, have been down here for a few weeks, and now the Clemson fans are starting to trickle in. They plan on turning Orlando orange, and it seems like the locals are going to make that transition a little bit easier. It has been a great trip from the work of the Citrus Bowl Committee to the work of Clemson Athletic Director Bobby Robinson and his assistant Len Goff to make it a complete success for the Tigers. That depends on what they do on the field against Penn State. On just about every college football team, the most important players are seniors, the fellows who have been there before, who know the ropes, who are able to lead the younger players and hopefully develop a successful attitude both on and off the field. At Clemson, that is exactly the way things are done. The seniors are a very important part of the way decisions are made on this football team. And this year, there's only a small amount of them, which has meant that they've had their work cut out for them. Me and Michael Dane and James Earl and Pyramid and you know, just to name a few, uh, we had a big job doing. Coach Ford told us that the first of the season, he said, I've, uh, I rarely have as few seniors as, as y'all. He said, y'all, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And like you said, we meet with him. We talk with him on Sundays after the game. 
and uh, we had a big challenge like every week. I mean, even though it was, uh, say, somebody like a, a smaller opponent we played, it was still a big challenge for us because we had to, we were responsible for the team's attitude during the week. One of the ways to develop that good attitude is to have the seniors perform well. And this year, all of the Clemson seniors have been vital parts of the way the team has played in the 1987 football campaign. Oh, yeah. I guess the guys look up to you and they respect you a little bit more. That, that helps out a lot. You know, when you say something, people are going to go, oh, man, you know, they go, okay, you know, we'll do that. Certainly the performance on the field the last couple of years has been above average and very good in many cases. But you only need to look back a few years to realize that many of the seniors on this football team, including the redshirt seniors, came to Clemson at a time when things weren't quite as good. This opportunity to play Penn State on New Year's Day Bowl, I think it speaks a lot for the seniors we have. You know, I believe out of anybody, I guess in the last 20 years, we have made a supreme sacrifice for Clemson you know, to come here. Know, go through three years of probation. No, no other class has done that but us. And, and I think the reward would be a uh, victory over Penn State and Citrus Bowl. There have been a great many pressure situations that this football team has faced. And in almost every case, there has been a senior with his hand on the football or in a position to help make that pressure come through to a win. I think more than anything, it's just knowing what you have to do and knowing that you've been there before and you don't really, the pressure's not there. It's just kind of more or less repetition and you just think of it more or less like practice and just go out there and do it. The coaching staff makes the decisions for this football team, make no mistake about it. But they do take the time to hear what the players have to say. And that might be the most important role the seniors serve on this football team. Because they are the link between the rest of the team and the coaching staff. It's not really a burden. It's just nice to be uh, knowing that you, uh, your opinion counts. And I think that's the most uh, great thing about it is that uh, your opinion counts and they're, they're willing to listen to you as a player. When everything's going right, it's pretty easy to be a leader, pretty easy to accept the responsibility involved in being a senior on a football team. But when things don't go well, that's when it becomes very difficult. Take the NC State game. Clemson didn't win that one, and that's when the seniors really came to the fore. But it burst against NC State, and, you know, all, all, the, all the hype of, of a national championship and all that kind of thing, that's, that's the way a senior sort of ideally, you know, wants to go out. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be for us. And so right then, personally, and I know, you know, the seniors got together and we said, hey, we've got to, we've got to pick it up and pick up the pieces from here. And we've done, we did a pretty good job, I think. The Tigers were able to rally. They finished 9-2 and two on the season. They have an opportunity to win the Citrus Bowl against a national power like Penn State. All in all, a very, very good season, one filled with memories. But most of the memories these seniors will take with them from their playing days at Clemson are not necessarily on the football field. The biggest part of this that I'll carry with me is, you know, how close I got to some of these guys and, you know, tell them things and we do things together. I mean, it's just great, you know, and I'll carry that with me no matter where I go and I can always if I'm in New York City or California Idaho anywhere you know and I see one of these guys it'd be nice to go up and grab me hug him you know hey I play football with that guy Clemson Tigers came into the Citrus Bowl game against Penn State with the intentions of playing well. And they came out and showed tremendous offense. Rodney Williams throwing the ball early and hitting the target every time. Keith Jennings on the receiving end. And then Tracy Johnson showing his power behind the excellent blocking of the offensive line to give the Tigers a lead. offensive line. I think they deserve all the credit in the world. Uh, they uh, got off the ball quick and stayed on the block, so uh, I think my success goes to them. Now Penn State countered the Tigers' opening drive with a good one of their own, but on a tricky reverse near the goal line, they fumbled and Tony Stevens got the ball. I think this all the pressure and the backs was looking at us instead of what they were supposed to be doing and causing them to fumble the ball. Penn State had success in the first half throwing the ball. Kinzer hits his receiver in stride, and the Nittany Lions are, got the ball game tied up 7-7. But the Tigers' offense on this day won't quit. Rodney Williams with a good throw to Keith Jennings, and then a great run. And Jennings was an important part of the offense. 
I think Rodney played a heck of a game, you know, along with Gary and their tailbacks. And I, I think that made things easier for me and Cooper and, you know, the other wideouts because of Rodney. You know, he, was so, he was so comfortable back there, you know, today. But the Tigers would come right back. Tracy Johnson scoring his second touchdown on the afternoon, and Clemson was back out in front. Now, the Tigers had a field goal chance at the end of the first half, but it got away. And in the second half, Penn State opened scoring with a field goal of their own. They'd cut the Clemson lead down to 14 to 10. Now, Rodney Williams was still throwing the ball well, and Gary Cooper, a native of Pennsylvania, was catching well. This big throw and run set up yet another touchdown by, who else? Tracy Johnson, his third one on the day. The Tigers had moved to a good size lead over Penn State, 21 to 10, and their defense was playing well, slowing the Nittany Lions down. Things weren't going well for Joe Paterno. They had a scoring chance near the goal line, but Dorian Mariable steps in from his linebacker spot and then makes like a fullback, running the ball out of danger to midfield. We've been working on it a little bit. I got a couple in uh, practice this week, you know, so I had a little practice at it. <laughs> On this afternoon, everything clicked for the Clemson team. Terry Allen goes over to make it 28 to 10, and the Tigers are playing with great confidence. We wanted to throw them first down and keep the defense off balance. We completed the first one. It gave me confidence. It gave the coaches confidence to, to call a pass play on first down. We get the team motivated, got them some uh, uh, drilling flowing, and, you know, that we were going to move the ball in Penn State, and, and it just carried on the rest of the game. The Clemson fans were cheering for Rodney Williams as the Tigers would take a decisive win over Penn State. A great way to end their senior. Yeah, the whole world, the world was down, but it came back up for us. It's uh, God, this is great. And so that's the way things went at the Citrus Bowl today. Clemson coming away with a win. Danny, congratulations, first of all. A couple of your kids told us something afterwards. They said there seemed to be an intensity all this week because everybody knew Joe Paterno doesn't lose big games. Everybody had to work hard because a month to get ready for something means we had to be ready, too. Well, I think our, our football team had excellent preparation uh, in Orlando. We had some real tough work, and it was like a spring practice, twice a day work. Really worked hard, had some real, real find uh, contact down there so uh, we got a lot accomplished and then uh, after that uh, we came and rehearsed our stuff but I, I, we had a not golden opportunity to stand to make something really big happen for Clemson University and uh, we took advantage of it because I think our people were very uh, grateful that we were playing Penn State we were grateful to be playing on January the 1st and we thought we could make Clemson University have something big happen today and it did just one X is an old question. Uh, people saw different sets, different formations, but it basically was the Clemson offense, the kind of things you want to run, just with maybe a little different look today. Well, our football team, I told our football team before the game that we, uh, uh, I don't know that we've gotten 60 minutes of play out of them uh, all year, and we really need to have a good 60-minute play. I don't think we did today. I think with the second half, five, first five minutes, our defense let up a little bit and didn't play very well, and they went down there and, and did a good job on us. But other than that, they played super. We borrowed a couple of formations from Syracuse that we saw on film. We had them in our, our program, but we, we hadn't used them very much, and they were very well for us. They worked very well for us today. <laughs> all right. Congratulations for both of you.